start any time. Okay. Uh, hey everyone, Kevin here from Sun King. Uh, I run our lab. If you don't remember me, it's been a while. Today we're going to go through all the steps we do to harvest yeast, uh, including dumping cell, dumping yeast, pulling a sample, cell counts, and then doing the math to calculate how much we need for a batch of beer. So we're starting here with this tank. This is a batch of sunlight cream ale that was brewed last week. We typically take all of our yeast from the previous week to use for the following week. One batch of beer can ferment, on average, four new batches of beer. So we always have plenty of yeast on hand to do whatever we need, whether it's sunlight, weed back with sires, or specialty beers. So here, uh, this guy is about a week old. It's ready to go. I'm going to pull, excuse me, I'm going to get a hose hooked up, and we're going to dump off the dead yeast first. As beer ferments, yeast settles into this cone. The dead stuff falls out first, and we'll be able to see what dead yeast looks like versus live yeast, or healthy yeast, and we'll pull a sample after that. So let me get that hooked up. This is a one and a half inch connection. I always want to spray it out with isopropyl. some water flowing just to make sure have water flowing water flowing down the drain just to make sure all the yeast is going to go down the drain and not get stuck in the line and start smelling all right a nice gentle flow if we go too fast We'll create a vortex inside the cone that will just suck all the yeast out of the middle of the cone and not allow anything on the sides to come down. So if that happens, we'll run into beer before we even run out of yeast. So nice slow flow. Nice slow flow. And for us, for a 60 barrel tank, we're probably going to dump off about 5 to 10 gallons. That's about how much dead yeast is in there. It's not an exact science, you just kind of got to look at it and smell it. And Look for types of chunks and proteins. This actually looks pretty good already. If you can see, I don't go over your camera there. All right. Little brown specks. This protein matter. But color looks good. Consistency looks pretty good. It should be like a kind of a thin smoothie. Thin smoothie with not a lot of specs. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that was. I've kind of kind of been told it should be sort of like uh, sort of like yogurt. Yeah, I can see that. Sort of like a creamy vanilla yogurt. Yep. With uh, very few uh, uh, particles in it. Exactly. And the color will depend on the beer that's fermenting. So we max be darker yeast just because it's a darker beer. So like lighter yeast because it's a lighter yeast, lighter color beer. Rinse off real quick. We've got the yeast. Uh, so it, it started. It started flowing uh, a little nicer there. Yeah. Whereas first it was kind of coming out in chunks. Yep. And that that I think is all part of the consistency, the creaminess, perhaps. Yep. Yep. You see more clumps on the bottom, more flocculation. Uh, it, it really is a matter of just trial and error based on your brewery and your yeast. We do so much sunlight, we pull yeast off sunlight all the time, we know what this yeast is supposed to look like. If we do a new batch of beer and try to harvest yeast off of that, it's a matter of measuring out a specific volume to dump first. So we'll get a five gallon bucket, fill it up, dump it, pull a sample, do a cell count and viability check, see what numbers we're at. 
and then from there, dump another five gallons off, and same thing again. Repeat that process two or three times until we get a good number, and then we'll just make a visual kind of snapshot of what the yeast looks like at the stage that we'd like it to be. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. So with a new beer, you're yeah. saying, with a new beer where you don't know what the yeast is, uh, it, how it's reacting. Exactly. Yep. Then you, you check it every five, yeah, depends on the size. So for 60 barrel tanks, yeah, five gallons is a good number. Yeah. If you're doing a 10 barrel batch, maybe every gallon. So it yeah. just depends on the size of the batch itself. They're okay. pulling from. Okay. So All I'm right. gonna disconnect. And we'll pull a sample. Back over here. Another one over here. Lots of isopropyl. Yes. 70% is what you want. 70% isopropyl. It says so right there on... <laughs> I got, got it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 60 is too little, 90 is, 80 is too much. Same thing uh, for the uh, COVID, right? Exactly, yeah. 70, 70%. Yep. I saw Kevin swing around that, that uh, tri-clamp. Takes That's, practice. Yeah. Takes practice. One thing you guys didn't get to do, we usually let uh, let you do that a little bit. Okay. All right, hold that up there by the valve. Hold by the valve? Yeah, just, that's where I was. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So after sanitizing everything, just pulling a sample. Perfect. This, this is some of the extra ice tea yeast we're experimenting. So I take a growler to autoclave it. So it's sterile. Uh, so this this is for something else you need. Yeah, yeah, it's not for, it's just two birds with one stone kind of thing. Yeah, I understand. You don't worry about some of that uh, isopropyl getting in, in there? There's enough yeast in there, but yeah, the top cells are gonna die, but it's not gonna kill enough to cause a problem. So a little bit in there, what's on top is dead, but I'm not worried about that. It'll homogenize at some point. Yeah, I gotcha. I thought I use this. But you didn't do that on the little sample. No, no. You just sprayed the outside of the container. Yep, I just needed a little bit, not a half gallon. Oh, this up here. All right. Yep. before and after. Yep, always. Sun King's one of the, the, I wouldn't say necessarily one of the few, I think a lot more people are using isopropyl now uh, in their spray bottles, but uh, not everyone uses isopropyl for their uh, instant sanitizing in the spray bottles. We'll see that a good A good tip about isopropyl too is isopropyl alcohol will shatter acrylic. Uh, so if you ever have anything that's a hard plastic, acrylic plastic, do not use isopropyl alcohol. It'll break it down and crack it. Uh, like instantly or over time? What do you say? Pretty quickly. Uh, if you, for example, is the auto siphons for homebrewers. There's the pump you put into the carboy and pump it up. Those are acrylic. You spray isopropyl, it'll start, shatter, it'll start cracking and shatter eventually. So not right away, but you'll notice cracks almost immediately. So, so, yeah, so two, basically, uh, so isopropyl dries out plastic. Yep. Super fast, way. basically, I think yeah. is what happens. Yep. Yeah. That's all it is. So. Okay. Yeah, star sand works, iodine works. Yeah. that kind of stuff. But isopropyl is a lot quicker to sanitize than other ones. 
Right, should I stop recording or, or uh, are we going to go straight in there and do something? Uh, it's a little loud. You can, stop, you can stop recording for a minute. Let me clean this up and then we'll head back that way and go to the cell house. Okay.